What is going on, y'all? Connor from Rock Pokemon here, coming at you with another Market Monday, another CGC return. Let's dive in, talk a little bit about the cards, what happened here. Uh, stoked. So, first up, we got a little bit of Pokemon before we get into White Schwartz. So many of y'all know, 1996 Bandai Cardass is the set that I would say is my biggest focus for collecting, kind of long term, right? So Bandai Cardass vending from 1996, the first ever Pokemon cards. Um, really no question there, first ever. So Flareon, uh, one of the few left that I'm still chasing, been trying to hit that nine. And sadly, this one got an eight and a half. However, this was a BGS seven. Uh, let's see if I have the, see if I can grab this right over here. Do, do, do. I think I still have it. Yep, there it is. So got this back from Beckett, got annihilated on the centering. But as you can see, it was, you know, really high subgrades everywhere else. And I really thought this had a shot at the nine. And honestly, I just really got, it's weird to see surface uh, with such a discrepancy from Beckett to, to CGC, but you know, it is what it is. They grade surface differently. So be it eight and a half on the Flareon. Uh, I actually was lucky enough to win a nine on PWCC last night. So this one will be going up for auction. Next up, the rat -ta 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 -ta. This, this was either raw or it was a PSA 8, and I just kind of forgot. And it turned into a CGC 9.5. I think this was the raw one, but I don't remember. Let me, I'm gonna go pull another label. Pull another label. Um, I, I think that was this 8, if I recall. I'm trying to remember. I'm not 100% sure, but it went for it anyway and ended up, you know, surface was, was tough. But other than that, we, we did really well. Uh, surprised that got a 10 on centering and it is a little off left to right, but it is what it is. It's close enough to a nine for me. That goes in my collection forever. Very stoked. Now let's hit some Weiss. So uh, some of these while you're watching this, happy Halloween, by the way, uh, have already sold and are going out the door, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that and kind of run through. So first off, We've got some FGO and we're starting off with a bang. We got the perfect 10 bonds. I mean, just the Sanzang. Zang. Absolutely amazing card. Looks so good with that gold against the gold number up there with the lines in the background. Huge Fate fan. Uh, this SP is an absolute banger. Not a serialized SP, but still a very, very cool SP. Um, this one's going to be hard, hard to let go of. So next up we have the Knight of Sorrow Tristan round table rare coming in at the 9.5. So got a nine on surface, which is, uh, pretty surprising. I'm going to have to review that one. See if I missed something or Splash the UV on the back, see if it's got that ink blotting uh, that, that's happened in this set. Could be the reason that Surface got that nine because this card looked super clean and I don't look to send in Weiss cards that are gonna get nine fives. So, especially with a nine, because generally on Weiss, you know your corners and edges are gonna be 10 and basically these are gonna be nine, five or 10 and that's gonna drive it. So getting a nine on Surface is very surprising for a card like this. So next up, we have actually two, one pristine and one perfect round table rare, independent knight, Lancelot. Love the purple on this card. Love grading multiples. Allows me to keep one, sell one for my collection. Uh, really, really big fan of this card. Purple is like one of my favorite colors. So really beautiful if you see how that, how that shine hits that when the light reflects on it. So really stoked on those. So that's it for Fate. Next up, I think we got some ladies. Yes, we're starting off with the gang. I got this uh, for free, free pack. Hit the uh, Ruby Rare, RBR, and it got the perfect 10. <laughs> Just unbelievable luck. Um, I would say that this is probably a touch off center, but it, it, it's, it's pretty darn close. Um, but it, it's a beautiful looking card and that gold with that gold looks so good. Next up, 
we've got everybody's favorite, Paradise in Heaven, Pristine 10 of Hestia from Don Machi. Absolutely uh, just a uh, not safe for work card there. Uh, a lot of people in the hobby love this. I could really care less. That one's going on, you know, up for sale. I just do not care. But it's a pretty card, honestly, when you look. I mean, it's a little weird, but, you know, just objectively for, like, like how that color works right there and how it goes, like, through her, like, leg with the water and stuff and the water turns rainbow. It's pretty sweet. All right. Next up, we've got ourselves the Seer, City Savvy Maiden from Danmachi. Another one where, you know, typical, typical Weiss grade, basically as good as raw. That one's sold already. It's going out the door. Then we have Dragon Maid, Dragonoid Millum, excuse me, from Slime, and Shuna from Slime. Uh, both of these going out the door as well. Uh, hit both of these off of three boxes in a whatnot break. So just uh, a classic uh, flip for me, honestly. Um, these are really cool, but I'm not that into Slime. But I really like the cards. I just, you know, have other cards I want to keep. So those ones are going to go as well. Then finally, this one's for the personal collection. The 9.5 Diane goes really well with the rest of my Seven Deadly Sins collection. I have a BGS Pristine 10 that I'll probably let go of or potentially try to hit the black label on because it's super clean. Uh, we'll, we'll do a future video where I have a few things that I'm going to be shipping off to, to Beckett to, to review. So thinking about that, but absolutely adore this card. Pulled this one myself. So this one was a lot more fun to keep rather than the uh, pristine 10 that I bought. So that one's going in the forever collection. Then we've got some attack on Titan heat. Starting off with the pristine 10 deep grudge. I think this is one of the coolest triple rares ever. The way that freaking blood spatter looks on this card, phenomenal. Again, graded two. Um, new one was slightly better than the other. Came in with the typical, you know, got a 10 centering on the perfect or the pristine 10, um, which played out well for me. So I'll keep one of those and sell one of those. Then we have a fun little subset. So first Titan rare facing off. Really cool car, pristine 10. Absolutely beautiful, just lost out on that surface grade, um, but a sick card. I mean, just absolutely so cool to see Aaron and the Titan, uh, Armor Titan facing off. And then uh, you get into the rest of the um, Titan rares. So there were seven in this set, seven actual Titans out of the nine made it. So we have the Card Titan coming in at the perfect 10. I actually think this card is sick. Uh, really, really cool. Cool texture. Um, looks absolutely stunning. Then we have the, yes, the Colossal Titan. Not my favorite uh, coming in at the Pristine 10, but, you know, had to grade them all for the little set. Then we had the 9.5 Warhammer. Um, tough, man. I don't, you know, now that I look at that, I haven't looked at those subgrades. I am surprised that didn't get a pristine. I'm trying to remember now. I guess centering is more heavily weighted still. I'm trying to remember that. I don't know if I've seen, got to think about some of my 9.5s, honestly, and think about if I've ever had one, like, not get a 10. I got to look at that one. I'm going to set that one to the side. That's weird. Yeah, you know, I'm actually, I'm not really, haven't really thought about this at all, but now that I'm pulling this one out of the, uh, the submission just landed and looking at it, surprised that didn't get a pristine tent. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen that before in any of my, I've created a lot of stuff with CGC. That seems off. I'm going to take a look at that. Anywho, that'll be interesting to, uh, figure out if I feel so inclined. Next up, we've got that Armored Titan coming in at the pristine. Yeah, that's there's no way. That's a total F up. It's a total F up by CGC. Either one of the subgrades is wrong or I don't I don't know. That's so weird. Okay. Might have to get that one re-slabbed. 
but nonetheless, the Armored Titan Show of Resistance Pristine 10. That one's a sick one as well. Love that one. And then, oh no, we got one more. Jaw, Jaw is probably my favorite. The texture on this card is phenomenal. Hit the perfect 10. I mean, it's absolutely sick. This card is freaking wild, wild. Um, my desk is set up a little differently today, so trying to capture the, the lighting just right, but y'all know I have notoriously bad lighting, but it's quite good for pre-grading. Um, huge fan of that card, very stoked on that. Then we have ourselves the Beast Titan, Supreme Artillery, coming in at the Pristine 10. It's a fun one. Not much hollow pattern there because he's so freaking massive, obviously, but funny looking card for sure. And then last but not least on the Titan Rares, we got Aaron coming in at the Pristine 10. Aaron alternative plan. Really like this one as well. Very, very clean. I um, believe I hit this off of like one box on whatnot, if I recall. So pretty, pretty sick pristine 10. So that's a really cool subset. Then uh, first SSP, have ourselves the Rhina, haunted by his own advice, coming in at that 9.5, um, centering and surface, coming in at 9.5, uh, corners and edges per usual at 10. This was one of the ones I actually wanted to pull. Um, I, I would say that this or, hmm, what would be my... Probably Armin were, were two of my favorites, actually. So this one's pretty sick. Uh, really big fan of, of that, um, you know, kind of picture of Reiner. I think it's really cool. Um, I just, I like it a lot. And the way that the blue signature looks against that rainbow pattern is phenomenal. And last but certainly not least, we've got some heaters. We've got the perfect 10, Levi. Merciless Assault. Hit this off a of one box. Unbelievable luck. That green signature is so sick. Absolutely freaking phenomenal card. I mean, just so sick. Yeah, huge, huge fan of this one. Very, very stoked. Um, Looking forward to reviewing these more in person and uh, seeing if I'll push any out to, to Beckett to try to black label. So uh, two more for you. One fun one for my collection, Asana, Unbending Fighting Spirit. Uh, I actually, this is a crack and a regrade. Ended up upgrading the centering, but still got a 9.5. That's cool. This is going in my personal collection back there with the, uh, the rest of them. So that's an awesome one for me. Love me some Asana. She's the best. SAO is my favorite of all time. It just... It's so nostalgic for me. It's how I first really went deep down the rabbit hole. Like I, I first watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but SAO is what I really gravitated toward when I first, you know, started getting into anime. So um, really, really stoked on this card. It's, that rainbow is so sick. Look at that. So cool. And last, but certainly not least, you're either Team Asuna or you're Team Sinon. Shout out to Titanic Pokemon. Ty pulled this one for me. The perfect 10. Light that penetrates darkness seen on. An absolutely phenomenal card. I mean, just wonderful. Um, actually got three different, two of the uh, perfect Titan rares and this card were all from Ty. Uh, he pulled me one and then I bought the two Titan rares from him and they all hit. Perfect 10. So shout out to him for handling cards super well. Um, Y'all, this this one's a banger. So this this one uh, this one's something. So I've got a 9.5 back there, but uh, this this Perfect 10 is pretty special. So y'all, thanks, uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm Connor from Rock Pokemon. As always, collect what you love, but do it intelligently. Happy Halloween. Talk to y'all soon.